Yes, Sixers made moves last night. As as we expected, uh, they signed Paul George. Sixers went out there and got Paul George. And it was about the years. It was about the years for the Clippers. They let Paul George walk. They balked over the years. And the Sixers, who we felt were the strong front runners, they got him. In addition, they got Eric Gordon for their bench, and they also signed Kelly Oubre. They also signed DeAndre Drummond. And today, Maxie got his bag. So Maury made good on his promise and retooled the Sixers. Let's hear uh, from Get Up. This is Get Up this morning with Tim McMahon and Tim Bontem, sorry, and our guy Alan Hahn on what this deal does for Philly. Let, let's talk about Let's hear them and talk about it. Adrian summed it up before. This, the Sixers have told Joel Embiid for a year to be patient and to wait. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go out next summer. We're going to get the best player we can get. And we're going to put the best team around you we possibly can. The, Celt the Sixers now have the best big three in the NBA. It's really not close. With the three guys they have now, all of whom were all-stars last year, you got a lead guard in Maxi, you got an elite two-way wing in Embiid, or in uh, Paul George, you've got well, maybe the most dominant big in the league in Joel Embiid. They fit together perfectly. They complement each other in every way on the court. They're versatile. Paul George is an elite shooter. You have two elite shooters now, given spacing around Embiid. They can go out and get any kind of role players that can fit alongside them. They can, they're versatile in a lot of ways. They have the highest ceiling now of any team in the league but the Boston Celtics. And they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Celtics depending on how healthy these guys are, which is obviously the biggest question. Paul George missed a bunch of time. You mentioned Alan Joel has missed a lot of time. But if they're healthy in the spring, which obviously is going to be a huge if, yes. they are as good as any team in the league. And this isn't like the Phoenix Suns putting this big three together yeah. last year that was flawed from the start. This is a group that fits together perfectly. And the Sixers were a team that a year ago didn't really have a chance to win a title. Now they can go into the season saying, we have a legitimate shot to win a title with Paul George, which is why, Alan, you're right. For Philadelphia, given this contract to Paul George right now, they had to do it when they got the opportunity. They took advantage of it. You, you yeah, point five in the chat said, this is media babble. I've, I'd like to agree. <laughs> I, I agree, man. This is media babble. I think we should ultimately retire the whole big three type of deal. Let's be real. The big three, when we came to the big three era, LeBron, what LeBron, D-Wade, and those guys did was legendary, man. D these are guys who are two of the greatest to ever play. Let's not just lump in, like, three all-star caliber players and say big three, big three, big three. What LeBron and them did was a real big three. Hate it or love it. KG, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, that was a big three. We're talking about legendary, legendary players. Like, this right here, they're a good team. They're going to be a good team. And they have three talented players, no question about it. Joel Embiid is an MVP. Tyrese, Hallibur, uh, Tyrese Maxey is a superstar on the rise. Paul George had an e excellent year last year. He's right. They're going to be a very good team. There's no hate on that. But this whole, like, big three thing, like, that alone is going to get them a championship. No, I, I doubt that. I don't see that. But this is a great team. He is right in that uh, the three guys are going to be playing perfectly off of one another. And Paul George has shown that ability to be an efficient on or off ball guy. And when you have a guy like a Joel Embiid who controls the game like he does, you know, Paul George is going to be a big beneficiary of that. They didn't have that in with the Clippers. I mean, he's going to get be, be getting even easier shots when you factor in the uh, the intention that you have to show at Joel Embiid. And then when you got Maxi coming at you 100 miles an hour, and he beats you with that first step, and he's out of there, he gets his second level. You got Paul George on the wings. It's going to be a problem. They're going to be very good. They added some depth. I don't know how much Eric Gordon has left off the bench. You know, they got an older again on the bench. Kelly Oubre had a good year for them off the bench. You bring in Andre Drummond. That's, uh, you know, whatever. It's ins insurance policy. Gives him some more toughness and rebounding. That's what they needed with that second unit. Paul Reed was trash. He wasn't getting that job done. So I like what Philly's doing. And I, I think one of the, the reports was that they could still have about $9 million left to play with. So do they want to go out there and get some more guard depth? We'll see. They got a good team. Are they, do I put them right up there with the Celtics? I still put the Knicks ahead of them. I'll put the Knicks up there with their four and their chemistry. But I'm going to put Boston. I'm going to put Boston. 
Knicks, Philly. I'll put the Bucks. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sleep on the Bucks. I'm not gonna put nothing past them. I'm gonna put the Bucks up there. I'll put the Pacers five, and I'll put Orlando. I'll put Orlando six for right now. Or you could put Orlando five, Pacers six. East is gonna be tough, man. But it, it's so funny that you know Bontemps mentions that Philly's gonna be a big if with with injury, and especially with George and Embiid for sure. But every team has injury questions, right? Knicks have big injury questions with Randall, OG, and Mitch. Philly has the injury questions. The Bucks has has injury questions with Giannis and Middleton. Pacers is Halliburton a guy who's gonna be durable for the entire eighty-two game grind? Siakam. You know, Boston was the only team last year where injuries really, really did not hurt them at all. And for the Knicks, injuries really didn't hurt them. They they were able to overachieve despite that. But that's where I'm going with my, my top five, top six. Boston, Knicks, Philly. I'm still giving the Knicks the edge over the Sixers. Bucks and Pacers. I think the Knicks bench could be very good when you put DiVincenzo and Hart out there with another year of deuce. I, I really do. So East is going to get interesting, guys. The Philly's not going to be done yet. We'll see what happens with... Uh, we will see what happens with the Knicks, what they do with the five... But I'm, I'm ready for the season to start right now. <laughs> what do you guys think here, man? I'm ready for this thing to kick off. Let's go here.